look, here's the black holocaust, I knew it was prophecy, a thousand times worse than your Jewish atrocities, uneven playing field, there'll never be a fair score, cause in 1619, that's when they declare war, we the 12 tribes, the ones that the promise reaches, my Negro... What's up, you got a question? No, I'm just looking at it. So how do you feel about that sign right there? How do I feel about this sign? That's yeah. right. That's yeah, we right. hate white people. We hate so-called white people. How do you feel about us hating white people? Is that it's not cool? It's a post-racial society. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you guys really hate white people. I really do. I can't stand it. That's you. right. Like I'm gonna be honest with you. If you, I don't okay. want this brother has a Naz, These two brothers have a Nazarite vow, so I wouldn't want you to die right in front of them. But let's say you turn the corner and just drop dead, I would be so happy, right? That's like, right. Is, I, I cannot stand you. Like just looking That's at you right, right now. Matter of fact, I'm gonna right. just, I'm gonna look the other way, right? I can't stand you. I can't stand any of you people. Yes. I hate you, but more importantly, God hates you. That's right. Yeah, the supreme being, the creator of heaven and earth, that dude's sick right there. This dude right here, this pale devil right here with the little chain on, he's a sick bastard. That's a sick bastard. You need to put him on a list, okay, on the watch list for future pedophiles in America. Okay, look at that. Hey, hey, Odoro rules. Odoro rules. Odoro rules. No, we don't want to shake hands. We don't want to shake hands. No, we don't want to shake hands. We do not want to shake hands. Can I ask you guys a question? What's your question? Come to the front. Come to the front. Appreciate it. What's your question, Odoro? I was shaking hands. What is this? What teaching the truth of the Bible? You believe in the Bible? I believe in it because it's right there. It's right there, right? So do you believe God loves everybody? Yeah, Romans 9, 13. This is the book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 13. I want you to, um, how, how deep into Christianity would you say you are? You sold out, man. All right, man. Well, uh, do you know what hermeneutics is? What is it? It's the study of the origin of the word. No, it's not. It's etymology. Okay, I mean, this, okay, yeah, that's too big of a word, right? So I want you to explain what this means. Let's just put it that way. Read this. This is the book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What does that mean? Uh, yeah, so does he hate Esau? Yeah, they just closed. Yeah. Well, we they we the 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 Watch this. What's the, what is the word hate there in the Greek? Yeah. Um, verse 11. For the children being not yet born, before Jacob and Esau were even born. Go ahead. Neither having done any good or evil. Yes, yeah, so you got to know the works of Esau before they did anything. Go ahead. That the purpose of God according to election might stand. The purpose of God according to election, meaning he chose Jacob and not Esau. Go ahead. Not of works. Not of works. You gotta look into the works of Esau. Go ahead. <laughs> but of him that called him. But of him that called right? So does God, God loves everybody, right? But he hates Esau. So what does that mean? <laughs> so he doesn't love everybody. In Genesis. Let me, let me ask you a question. All right. People die. Yeah, people do die. And people kill people. Yes, they do. Is that the way it happens? So we, uh, okay, what does that mean? What does that have to do? Is that just what happens during every single day? Yes. Okay. We do have that understanding here. Now, let's ask this question. Let's ask it. Do you know that there's a difference between the old and the new Oh, really? Okay. Okay. okay all we do. Get Genesis 25, 25, 25 first. Okay. So, let's, let's not leave there. Right. Get 23. Yeah. See that. And get, uh, you got know, in the first Hebrews. game, give me in the first game. Oh, please, please, this is please. the book of Genesis, chapter five, um, 25. You look like you're reasonable. We can have a good dialogue about the Bible, right? Cool, cool. I'll just ask some questions after this. Right? Go ahead. Perfect, cool. We can just, we don't want, we don't got to do it. We can just, you know, you answer a question, you ask me. We can do that. That's fine. I love that. Go ahead. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 25, verse 25. 23. 23. Okay, so the first came out. And the first came out red, all over, like in Harry Garner. So the Bible says the first one, Esau came out red, all over. He was a red man all over, right? Like a hairy garment. Go ahead. And they called his name Esau. Called his name Esau. Go ahead. Verse 26. So yeah, he's red. Right? So the red people. Who would you identify as the red people on earth? I don't know. I was pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Right? So you got you talk about the old covenant and the new covenant, right? Okay, so give me Hebrews 8. And um who's the new covenant for real quick? I got two questions, right? Are we in the new covenant number one? And who's the new covenant for number two? We are. Okay, and now who's it for? If you're going to quote Hebrews, it would have been for all the people that God had promised it to and gave it to us. 
Who's, who did he promise it to? All the prophets. For? He sold the prophets. He said, we, I've got this new covenant. Mm -hmm. yeah, they were working for a day to come. Right. They were working for, Moses was working for a day to come. He wasn't even allowed to enter into the promised land right. because of the sin. Right. All these people did work that led up to now mm -hmm. for a people that after the covering of Jesus, right. we wouldn't be able to enter the promised mm -hmm. land. Not, mm -hmm. not into Jerusalem, but into the real Jerusalem, really? into heaven. Mm -hmm. The real Jerusalem is the heaven, right? So there's not going to be so that's the the, the new Jerusalem. Yeah, yeah, I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get that first. We'll deal with that. Get that. This is Hebrews chapter eight, verse eight. For finding fault with them, he said, "Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant." God's going to make a new covenant now, with who? With the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Well, everybody. The house of Israel and the house of Judah. The new covenant is for the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Go ahead. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continue not in my covenant. Uh, now, real quick, the, one of the questions I asked you was, um, "Who's the new covenant for?" The answer was right there: Judah and Israel. The nation of Israel. That's who the new covenant is for. The other one I asked you was, "Are we in the new covenant?" I'm gonna prove that we're not. Watch this. Go ahead. Verse 13. In that he saith a new covenant. Okay, uh, okay, yeah. okay, verse 9. It's not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continue not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. This is the covenant, covenant. Watch this. Let me ask you a question before we get to it. Do you have to teach people about God? You get to, right? You teach people about God. You have to say, okay, you got to know the Lord, right? He wants us to. Right? He wants people to know the Lord. And, and, you, right? and so he uses you as a vessel to get people to know the Lord, right? Okay, go ahead. Say if the Lord, yep. I will put my laws in their mind uh -huh. and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall, uh, shall be to me a people, and they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, Know the Lord. We're not going to have to teach people to say, Know the Lord. Why? For all shall know me from the least to the greatest. So you said you have to teach people to, to know the Lord, but the Bible says under the new covenant, you won't have to teach people to know the Lord. I said that I get the opportunity. But the Bible says you, there won't be an opportunity because everybody will know the Lord in that day. I, hey, I honestly agree with that. So are we in the new covenant? Here's the thing. I agree that everyone's going to know the Lord. Guys, I do. I right. really do. Right. And I agree also that it's my privilege to teach people about the Lord. Right. The difference is everyone knowing the Lord is not going to be a pleasurable experience for some, right. although the people that know Him are going to have a good time. So under the New Covenant, everyone will know the Lord. Everyone will eventually know the Lord. Two questions, right? Know who He Hold is. Hold on, watch this. Two questions. Does everyone know the Lord right now? I would say no. Are we in the new covenant right now? Yes. <laughs> okay, so now that we're off the new covenant, um, you said the new covenant, no, we're still on it, right? You said the new covenant is for the people who we promised it to. The new covenant is for his people. Who are his people? The people that come to him. Who are they? Get Matthew 2 and 6. You can, you can no, go you to stay in Romans 9 and 4. And get, matter of fact, read right. Romans 9 and 4. Right. Get Matthew 2 and 6. My fault. Matthew this 2 and 6. The, this is the book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 4. Uh -huh. Who are Israelites? Who are Israelites? Same way we just said to the house of Israel, right? Who are Israelites? To who pertains what? The adoption uh -huh. in the glory in the covenant and the what? Covenant. So the covenants pertain to Israel. Yeah. Go ahead. In the giving of the law, uh -huh. in the service of God, and the, and the promises. So you said, well, there's two things in there. So the right here says the the promise. Sorry, that the new covenant is for the Israelites. And you said that the new covenant is for the people we promised it to, and the promise is for the Israelites. So what conclusion can we draw based on the information? Romans 1 16, the very end of it. It's okay. to the Jew first, and oh. then to the Greek. The Greek, now, the translation of that Greek is Gentile, meaning everyone who's not involved in no, it's not. Israelite. No, it's not. No, it's not. What's the Greek word for Gentile? Are you talking to me? Because you're wondering. Yeah, uh, what's the Greek word for Gentile? I don't know. So how are you going to tell me what the word is there if you don't know the Greek? I did a little study on it. You did a little study on it? I did. Well, the word for Greek there is called Hellenin, right? The word for Gentile is ethnos. Two totally unrelated words. So you just lied. Okay. 
Right, so read. Um, All right, go ahead. Uh, well, real quick, let me ask you a question, right? Okay. Where is Rome? Rome, in Italy. It's in Italy. So why would he talk about Greeks when he's in Rome? Because they intermingled at that time. Oh, give me Second Maccabees six. Really? Yeah. Let me tell you something. What's your name? Jacob. Jacob. Okay, oh, wow. Jacob. Came, came out looking like he's over my name. <laughs> That's why I should say the turning of things upside down. Hey sisters, hey sisters, excuse me sisters. Y'all are Israelites. Y'all are Israelites. Oh, the okay. Yeah, get uh, um, sick of Maccabees. You know what I want. So let me, well, we'll, we'll get to a couple things. There's a, how much time you got for questions things of that nature? You got a few minutes. You got a few minutes. All right. All right. Give me that. Sick of Maccabees, six and six. Six and six, okay. Okay, there you go. This is the book. Hold on, real quick. So the word, the, when you actually look at the word Greek there in the, uh, in the Greek, it doesn't just mean Gentile, okay. right? The word there is, is Helen, is Helen, right? That's where you get the word Helen, Hellenized, because you had Hellenized Jews. That's why he's talking about Greeks when he's in Rome. Why would he talk? Why would he be talking about Greeks when he's in Rome, Italy? They have no correlation other than the Israelites were under what captivity? The Greek captivity. So he's talking about Israelites that were enslaved under the Greeks that were conformed and forced to worship and follow the ways of the Greeks, which we're going to read about right here. Right. This is the book of 2 Maccabees, chapter 6, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days uh -huh. or ancient feasts. So under the Greek captivity, the Israelites weren't allowed to keep the Sabbath or feasts. Go ahead. Or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. So if I was under the Greek captivity and I was a Jew, and there was a law that said you can't call yourself a Jew, what would I call myself? I don't know. Yeah, it was something that's interesting is I really don't know the apocrypha. Uh -huh. I think it's interesting. You're uh -huh. teaching me something. Okay. So I'm under the let's just let's just analyze this, right? I'm under the Greek Empire. And the Greek Empire mandates that I, me being a Jew, I'm no longer allowed to call myself a Jew. But I'm under the Greek Empire. So what what do you think I'm gonna call myself after that? After I'm not allowed to call myself a Jew? Agree. Yeah. Wow. Makes sense. It makes sense, right? So when he talks about to the Jew and to the Greek, well, again, he's talking to the Romans. So why would he be talking about the Greeks to the Romans? Well, because there's Israelites that are in Rome. That's when you read about the Acts. In Acts, okay, come. There was a, uh, um, I can't remember who exp who expelled the Jews from Rome in the book of Acts. When you read, I want to say it's like Acts, the twenty second chapter, it might be. There was all kinds of Jews amongst the Roman yeah. Empire. Paul himself was a Roman, and he was what, a Jew, yeah. right? So there was Jews, dual citizenship there, right? So he, so he was a Jew that had Roman citizenship because they were what Jews in Rome, and these Jews in Rome that he's addressing, that he's calling Greeks, were forced to become Greeks under the Greek captivity. That's why keep going. Verse seven, and in the day of the king's birth, every month they were uh, brought by bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifices, and when the feast of Bacchus was kept. The Jews were compelled to go in procession to Bacchus carrying Adi. Uh, now, um, wait, where was that? We did it again. Oh, was that, was that in like one of the apocryphal books? Yeah, it's in the apocryphal. Oh, I, like I said, I don't know the part. Keep right. going. Verse 8 Moreover, there went out a decree to the neighbor cities of the heathen by the suggestion of Ptolemy against the Jews that they should observe the same fashions mm -hmm. and be partakers of their sacrifices. So now we have not only are Greeks not allowed to keep the Sabbath, not allowed to call themselves Jews, now they're being forced to do the things that the Greeks do. So now they're really getting immersed in Greek culture, right? Because I'm not allowed to, you said that they're going to start calling themselves Greeks, right? What is it? Walk like a duck? Talk like a duck? What are you going to be? You're a duck. You're a duck. So you walk like a duck, you walk like a Greek rather, and talk like a Greek, people are going to start calling you a Greek. So same way you have Israelites that were Hellenized being referred to as Greeks in the New Testament. What you got? Go ahead. And this is going to prove that Paul is, is talking about, um, give me Romans the ninth chapter as well. This is going to prove that Paul is speaking to Israelites. Go ahead. I'm reading the KJV and the GMT. The KJV first, Romans chapter 4, verse 1. What shall we say then that Abraham, our father, what? our father, as pertaining to the flesh, have found? So, so, he, so right here, it just said, Romans 9 and 10, it said that the, the people living in Rome, identified Abraham as their father. Who identifies Abraham as their father? Jews. Jews, boom. So that must be what? Jewish Romans. Jews, right? Uh, yeah. Go ahead. This is uh, Romans chapter 4 and 1 in the GNT. What shall we say then of Abraham, the father of our race? What, what, what was his experience? See that? So they identified Abraham as the father of their race. Now watch that. Because someone could try to make the argument, well, from Abraham, you have many people. So that, it's going to get even more dead. Romans 9 and 10. Watch this. Uh, and not only this, 
But when Rebecca also had conceived by who? By one, who? even by our father Isaac. Even by what? Our father Isaac. So not only do I identify Abraham as their father, they identify Isaac as their father too. Yeah. So they're what? They're Israelites right here. So when you go to the to the Jew first and to the Greek, it's because like we just explained, these are Jews who have been Hellenized. Because when you go to the Bible, salvation is actually only for the nation of Israel. Right, that's right. Salvation is not for any other people. Do you believe that? I, I believe that the Lord was... He was stubborn, man. I'll, I'll say it right now. You just called God stubborn. I did, listen. Wow. And, uh, hear me out. Wow. Just, just, let, just let him go. Go ahead. God is stubborn in His love for His people. Right. He is very stubborn. And what He does is He gives opportunity after opportunity to the same people. You, you guys have read Judges, I'm sure. Yes, we have. We know that Judges, Israel, uh, proved himself a nation of fools. And okay. they went right back and forth into everybody's captivity. It was like, here, yep. uh, Moab, I'll, let me give you all of my, all that I have. You know, let's start doing what you do. Then they put them in slavery. Exactly. You and, see that? And that goes right back to us doing the, doing the things the Moabites do, yeah. doing the things that the Greeks do. And so then, we see that happening uh, perpetually throughout Israel's history. But go ahead. And then, and then God does something that is totally undeserving of stupidity. He gets them out of it. Uh -huh. He gets them out of it. He says, Alevia, come back. Uh -huh. Here's another judge. We'll put someone else in charge. And let's see if you can get it right this time. Uh -huh. He does this over and over. Again. Right. They continue to screw things up. And finally, one day they say, we want a king. Who do they get? You guys, I heard you talking about it. Saul. Uh -huh. Saul. You know, you can read anything you want to about Saul. Uh -huh. Pretty obvious. Saul can be a pretty crappy dude. Uh -huh. uh, he did a lot of pretty stupid stuff. And in the end, he ended up screwing himself out of the kingship. Real quick, what was the straw that broke the camel's back with Saul? The straw that broke the camel's back? Yeah. Whenever he didn't finish killing everyone. Oh. You know who those people were? You know who the Amalekites are? Uh, Sons of Amalek? Sons of Amalek. Amalek was the grandson of who? I don't know. Esau. Really? So God literally was mad at Saul because he didn't finish killing Edomites. Who are Edomites? People that look like you. Go ahead. Uh, what's up? Yeah, what's up? Uh, I was just going to keep going. I had a train of thought. Uh -huh. um, but, you know, Saul screwed some things up. Certainly. He did. Certainly and then David... Did. David, we get him on there, and mm -hmm. he's called, you know, I heard you guys refer, refer to him as man after God's own heart, mm -hmm. which, you know, for the most part, he did okay, mm -hmm. but we all know that he saw this pretty looking naked gal on top of a roof okay. who he wanted to have sex with, yeah. and you know what, if the word says that uh, adultery is bad, he did it, and then he sent his prize soldier to go You're to right. the front lines mm -hmm. to kill him. Yeah. So we go on, David being a man after God's own heart, making such a fool of himself. Real, real quick, though, I'm, I'm glad you're giving a nice little account on the nation of Israel's history. But can you answer to me? You, I asked, I said, I made a statement, I declared a statement that salvation, meaning the people who Christ died for and that He's going to save, is Israel exclusively. Do you agree with that statement? I'm getting there. I promise. Okay. I all have, right. I all right. Let's I just let's try to let's try to you know. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll try to get there. All right. Um, Levi, interesting. I want to ask you about that. All right. Um, so we zoom forward. I won't go through the whole Old Testament of everybody that screwed up. Appreciate it. But I will go to the New Testament. There we go. Where we go to Jesus, and we see people come to him. The uh, to the Lady Samaritan the, woman. The Samaritan woman. Yeah, thank you, sir. John four uh, twelve. The Samaritan woman who came to him, <laughs> and he said, "The dogs are not worthy of the bread that's at the children's table." Uh -huh. So we look at that and we think. That, that's cruel. That's cruel. Right. That's rude. That's what I want to say. Okay? That's what you want I to call Jesus say. rude? That, that's what I wanted to say at oh, first. Okay. And then I think about the Lord's promise is to Israel. Right. We can all agree based on Scripture that that's His promise. Right. We go forward in Jesus' life. Uh -huh. Jesus ministers. Mm -hmm. Jesus does good things. He does miracles. He produces stuff out of nowhere. Uh -huh. And then all of a sudden, the Jews have enough of it because He challenges every single religious thing that their brains can think of. Get John, got, get John the 11th chapter. Go ahead. Jews have 613 laws. Yes, we do. Plus 10. Plus yep. 10. 613. Well, 10 is a part of 613. So it's, the 10 commandments are part of the 613. Okay. So Those 10 go. are just isolated in the Sorry, Exodus, the 20th chapter. Go I, don't, I don't math too well. Anyway, All right. um, we go there. So many laws. And then he says there's two laws that matter. But God That's not what he says. Love God. No, he said that they encompass all, all of the law and the prophets. Okay. All the law and the prophets mm -hmm. go, and these two things 
Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the neighbor as yourself. Now, what does that mean, though? What does that mean on these two hang all the law and prophets? Every single one of those laws. If you look at the intent and the heart behind everything going on, every single one of those things can be found in that statement. Okay. If I love, listen, if I love you right. with all of my heart, uh -huh. because I love the Lord uh -huh. with all of my heart, I am not going to... To kill me. To kill you. Exactly. Okay. Or, right. or if... I was attracted to your wife. I want to have sex with your wife. There you go. Okay. I could go down a list of things. Right. If I, if I love the Lord my God with all my heart's own strength, mm -hmm. you're a very misquoted scripture on tattoos, mm -hmm. which is stupid, mm -hmm. and it was all about this, you know, other culture that did that as a mark to their gods, and I went over and did that, you know, that wouldn't be, that would be against my God. And so, you know, I'm not saying anything about tattoos, probably a misquote there, but... What I'm saying is that the entire law of the prophets mm -hmm. goes in those two things. Jesus, my point is, Jesus said that, mm -hmm. and it challenged everything that they could possibly okay. say. So, so I need you to go somewhere. I'm, I'm just trying to get you to prove where other people outside of Israel can be saved. Absolutely. Okay. I'm, I'm, I promise I'm going there. You're getting there. All right. But now, real quick, you mentioned the, the Samaritan woman, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, let's yeah. read about the Samaritan woman. Give me John 4. I want to say it's around 12. It might be like 16. Where's John 4? Art thou greater than our father? 12. This is the book of John, chapter 4, verse 12. Uh -huh. Art thou greater than our father Jacob? So the Samaritan woman identified Jacob as her ancestor. Who identifies Jacob as their ancestor? Jews. Jews. So she's a Jew. Okay. Okay, so, so you go to the Samaritan woman as an example in an attempt to say this is where yeah. Christ said a non-Israelite can be saved. But this is an Israelite woman in itself, so yeah. you can't go there. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because, like, the kingdom of Judea, or the Jews, mm -hmm. uh, come from Judah. And yeah. then we know that the tribes of Israel were divided back uh -huh. in 1 Kings, 1 Chronicles. And so we see the entire tribes of Israel over here, kingdom of Judah over here. What do you mean so, kings of the entire tribes of Israel over here? All of them except for, like, Judah. And I think Benjamin got grafted on later. But what I'm saying is that there were two separate kingdoms, Israel over Samaria and Judah had its own separate place in Jerusalem. So there were two separate kingdoms. Uh -huh. Not that this little history lesson really get, get, at all. get John 10, and then I want you to come to John 11. Where it was Israel in the land of Israel. When I say Israel, I'm talking about the Judah, Benjamin, Levi. That's Judea, right? Yeah, yeah. That's the southern kingdom of the nation of Israel. Yeah. Other tribes that you mentioned that were, were in Samaria. That were separated. Were they in Samaria? Were they in that land during the time of Christ? Um, they were probably intermingled. There were some, they were, they were intermingled at that time. You say some, I'm talking about the majority of them. You, you, of course you had, what was it, the Asherite woman. Other than, you have not a lot though. Other than Greece and other areas of Rome. I mean, that was really? all the Roman kingdoms anyway. And so uh -huh. they, they owned that pretty much. Okay. So you mentioned that the uh, they, the kings were split, right? Now this goes right into who Christ died for. Get John 11, matter of fact. Let's get to the point 49. This is John chapter 11, verse 49. And one of them named Caiaphas... Being the high priest that same year said unto them, ye know nothing at all. Um, this is after, I believe, Christ, he healed the blind man, and then after he uh, brought Lazarus back to life. And what did they do when they brought uh, when he brought Lazarus back to life? They went and told the Pharisees, oh my God, what's, what this Jesus, what he's doing, he's going to take away our power, right? All men will believe on him. So Caiaphas, the high priest, he's a learned man in the Bible, obviously, yeah. because he's the high priest. Yeah. So he's sitting back and listening to him. Huh, okay, he's healing people, right? He's bringing people back to the dead, back from the dead, rather. This is the guy. Watch. Go ahead. Nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people. Or what? One man should die for the people. That one man should die for the people. What's the people being referred to? The, the Jews. Okay, so that one man, Christ, should die for the Jews, right? And that he, that, oh, it. And that the whole nation perish not. What's the whole nation? All the Jews. All the Jews. Go ahead. And this spake him... Not of himself. Not talking about himself. Caiaphas is not saying me, Caiaphas, I'm going to die for our people. But who's he talking about? But being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. Which you agree is the Jews, right? Now watch this. Go ahead. And not for that nation only. See, he didn't die for the Jews only. That's your point, right? Go ahead. But that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. So you mentioned that even the, the tribes of Israel, they were scattered, right, in Greece and Rome. So who were the children of God that were scattered abroad? All the Jews that were scattered all abroad. Okay, so right there it just said that Christ died for all the Israelites. Yeah, absolutely. So, so where did it say he died for everybody? This question I have. What was Adam? What was Adam? What do you mean what was he? 
he wasn't an Israelite. That's, but that doesn't matter because there was no Israelite. No, 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 no. But he was responsible for the fall. Okay. Okay. So he was responsible. He made the decision. And I'll get back to the whole thing with Jesus here mm -hmm. in a second. But who was Adam? Was he an Israelite? Was he a Jew? Was he a son of Abraham? No. Uh -huh. He was Adam. a son of God. The same way that Israelites are sons of God. Absolutely. No. I don't have. No, I don't have a problem with that. Okay. But he's not an Israelite, and the, the promise of God there is for redemption. I know Adam made a big mistake. Right. You know, if we think that that period between Adam and the sons of Abraham. Okay, so Christ died for redemption of what? The curse of Adam or somebody else's curse? The curse of Adam. Where is that in the Bible where it says he came to redeem from the curse of Adam? Sorry, man. Can't give you a direct It don't exist. Okay. I'm going to show you what he came to redeem for. Let's go to Galatians 3 and 13, right? And then get get that in um, um, uh, Deuteronomy 29. Read. This is the book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 13. Uh -huh. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. The curse of Adam? Of the law. Of what? Of the law. Of the law, read. Being made a curse for us, right. for it is written, Curses every one that hangeth on a tree. So he was hung on a tree that was made he was made a curse for that, right? To redeem us, Israel, from the curse of the law, right? So give me that in uh, 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 twenty nine. I need twenty nine. Where it says all this curse. The twenty nine and like nineteen. This is Deuteronomy chapter twenty nine, verse nineteen. And it came to pass when he hears the words of this curse. What? Of words of this curse. Of this curse. What curse? Let's see. Let's go to 15. 28 and 15 now. Go ahead. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and statutes which I command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So who did he say that to? To the Jews, right? To Israel. So he said this to Israel. And then this is the curse that's in the law. And then Christ came to redeem us of the curse of the law, not of Adam, the curse of the law. So what does that let you know? He died for the Israelites. Every, I'm going to tell you this, every, you can go down any road, right? All roads are going to lead to the same place. Salvation is exclusive to the Israelites. Every road is going to lead there, no matter where you go in the Bible. Precept? Okay, go ahead. This is Galatians 4, verse 4. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, under the law, to redeem them that were under the law. All the sons of Adam. To redeem them that were under the law. Under the law, right? Go ahead. That we might receive the adoption of sons. We might receive the adoption of sons. Interesting. Go ahead. Right. Okay, give me, um, okay, there's more? Okay, give me, um, we're going to go to the, the, the one. Give me the addition to answer 10 and 9. Now, real quick, why, we're sorry, what scripture can you show me to prove that Christ died for all nations? Because you posed the question, but I want a scripture. Are you able to substantiate with scripture? Let me see. Probably not. I wish I had memorized all the numbers. Uh -huh. Paraphrase? You guys are definitely beating me on you, you can paraphrase, though, if you know what it says. We'll find it. I do want to point something out. Okay. I, want to look, I, want, I do want to look at the Samaritan woman. I, I, love, I love that story. I'm a, I'm a Christian. Is a Samaritan woman an Israelite? She was a Samaritan Jew. Weird. Kind of weird. So she's a Jew, right? Are, Jew, are, Jews, real quick, are Jews Israelites? I would say yeah. I don't, okay, see, so I don't she's, see any reason why they wouldn't be. Right, right. Okay, so let's, let's go step by step. The Samaritan woman. She's a Jew. Jews are Israelites. She's an Israelite. We say Christ died for Israel only. So going to the Samaritan woman to prove Christ died for anybody outside the nation of Israel would do what for you? In that time period, she wasn't recognized as a Jew. But hold on, it doesn't matter. She said she. What? What? I, one before uh, you I, cut hold, me off, real, real quick. I do want to say, uh -huh. in that time period, the Samaritans were looked like kind of the ugly stepchildren to the Jews. Okay, true. Step brothers, maybe step brother and True. And well, that, that was because the king of Judah uh -huh. was, you know, the main kingdom. That's. Uh -huh. That was the one that, you know, my covenant will be with David and his descendants. Uh -huh. You know, that's the yeah. yeah, now, you got to understand, right? So, when God made a promise to who? The Jews. Abraham, right? Yeah. We'll just go to Abraham. He yeah. said, all they see, right, through Isaac and through Jacob. So, it didn't matter about the political relationship of Judea and Samaria or Judea and anywhere else. The fact is, he promised this to all his seed, right? You have something to come on the scene when a white man comes into power through the Greek Empire, right? They start this 
your geographical location determines who you are rather than your nationality. Before that, every other place was dealing with patrilineage to identify people, okay. right? When the Greek came on the scene now, if you live here, this is who you are, right? Now we have it like in America. It doesn't matter where you come from, people can say, well, I'm an American, because I'm an American citizen, right? This was an ideology that was introduced by the white man, going back to where he read in the Maccabees, when he said, oh, we want everybody to just start calling themselves Greek. Y'all introduced that to the earth. So now, once, once we get to the time of Christ, now we have this system of confusion that says, okay, these are Judeans, and these are Samaritans. It doesn't matter who they're living, if they see the Abraham or not, just where they live is going to dictate who they are. This is where confusion begins to come in, right? So you have to understand the, the all of that goes into the context of all these verses. So like you said, they were being looked at as the ugly stepsister, right? But in truth, you had Israelites there, you had other people there, heathens there as well, right? That goes back to when Solomon Asar put certain heathen nations in there to replace the Samaritans when they took when he took them into slavery. But some of them came back there as well, right? That's why when he said, uh, -uh you can have five husbands. Remember he said that? You have five husbands? Right? He told that to the Samaritan woman. Christ said that. The woman at the well. You remember she had she said, yeah, she said, I had no husband. And he said, You have five husbands. You have had. You've had five and you know why he said that? Because she had been divorced five times. No. There's something deeper than that, right? You can look at that on the surface, but the deeper thing in that is in Samaria, they set up five idols when the heathens came in there. And that, like you said, who were they worshiping at that time? Who were they worshiping? Those five idols that got set up there. So when you talking about you have had five husbands, the greater indication was the Israelites in Samaria were worshiping those five idols. Right? Matter of fact, get John 4. Who got John 4 still? Hold it what you got. Give me John 4 and read uh, 23. This is the book of John, chapter 4, verse 20, 23. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. See that? He said the true worshipers, right? Read verse 22, matter of fact. That's what he's telling. He's cutting her, basically saying, y'all are up here worshiping these idols. The Father is seeking the true worshipers. Read. Verse 22. Uh -huh. Ye worship ye not know not what. Uh -huh. we know you don't know what you're doing worshiping those idols. Read. We know what we worship. Uh -huh. For salvation is of the Jews. Basically saying you got to come down here to serve the Most High, right? So that's that was that whole thing. He was correcting somebody who was an Israelite that was off into idolatry in Samaria. That's simple, right? Go ahead. Okay. So and I can disagree on some of the historical aspect of that. I mean, that's fine. That's that's not important. That's right? fine. So um, now the Samaritan woman. That's that's what I was saying. The one about whose daughter, I believe. Oh, no, that's um, a, that's a Syrophoenician. 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 Sorry, uh -huh. hey, but I will. You guys might disagree, but I'll, I will say, 15. from my background, I will say the same difference. For that, for that reason, I will say the same woman who was not a dweller of Jerusalem, okay. a, I guess a tribe, member of the tribe of Judah, I will say that. But I will say this. Um, I found it interesting how he said that, and it comes across as rather rude and, and kind, of, kind of hurtful, but uh -huh. what, it, what ended up happening? With what? The San Phoenician woman? Yeah, what happened was He healed his daughter. He healed her daughter. Yeah, why? Her daughter. Yeah. He healed her daughter. That's what, why? Why? Because, give me Matthew 15 and 24. I'm going to show you why he healed her daughter. Huh? Matthew 15 and 24. I'm going to show you why he healed her daughter. This is why. Notice, the San Phoenician woman, what did he do to her? He didn't do nothing for her. He healed her daughter, though. Watch. Why? Matthew 15 and 24. The same chapter where this scenario happens. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but into the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So who is Christ sent for? The lost sheep of Israel. Is he sent for everybody? Or just the lost sheep of the house of Israel? He just said the lost sheep of Israel. <laughs> right, why? Well, he said the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So it can't be anybody else because he himself said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So that's why he healed the daughter because she's an Israelite. He's sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, Give me additions to Esther 10 and 9. Because I'm going to show you something in the Bible, right? I'm going to show you something in the Bible that proves emphatically that salvation cannot be for all people. Because like the brother was bringing out, there's a, a promise given to the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Israelites. Those promises are for those said people, the uh, Israelites, right? Not for everybody. So what are those promises? And what are the other promises that everybody else gets? Because that's where you're, you come in, right? And that's why I'm sure you have a question. Can I ask? Yeah, I do, I do have a question. Real quick, before you ask the question. Yeah. We're saying salvation is for Israel. I'm sure you're okay. Then what about everybody else? Is that your question, or is that something? No, that actually, I was going to ask um, I, I, just because I I want to understand basically make sure that we're on the same page as like uh -huh. our 
what we accept as Bible, what we accept as not Bible. We look, I, personally, I'm looking at the epistles like Peter, the things that Paul writes, the things that John writes later, first, second, third John. I'm looking at those, and would I equate them to the, the, the Torah? No, I wouldn't. But what I would do is I would take their testimony as apostles of Christ, and what I want to look at, and you know, all scriptures free for the purpose of edification. Okay. All that stuff. But do you guys, do you guys accept? The works of Peter, John. Yes, we do. Okay, okay. So, Peter, believe it's, I think it's First Peter chapter 2. You guys will have to check me on that. Mm-hmm. First Peter chapter 2, yep. verse 21, 20 through 24, something like that. Mm-hmm. There's, there's a verse in there mm-hmm. that the Lord said, he is not, or that uh, Peter said, the Lord is not willing that anyone should perish. But that all should repent. But that all should come to repentance. Now, what's the Greek word for anyone? Tell me. I'm asking you. I mean, you, I, I'm not a scholar in the Greek, mm-hmm. but I'm, what I'm asking you guys is... Get Romans in that chapter. Let me show you something, right? So it, when it says there, what does that mean? God is not one that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Yeah. Does that mean he wants everybody to live? I think he wants everybody. So now this is what you're doing. This is what you... This is, I'm going to tell you what you're doing. You may not know what you're doing, but you're literally limiting God's power. Okay. Now I'm going to show you how. Get Romans 9. Who has resisted his will? Oh, 19. 9. 9. Okay. Watch this. This is the book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 19. Uh-huh. Thou will say then unto me, Why do if he yet find fault? Uh-huh. For who have resisted his will? Can anyone resist God's will? Oh, yeah. You, you can resist God's will? I think so. So if God wants something to happen, there can there's something that can stop it from happening? Well, let me ask you this. Get Psalm 55 and 11. If anyone can resist God's will... Get Numbers... Or get Psalm... Or sorry, get Isaiah 55 and 11 and Numbers 23 and 18. Go ahead. Program you guys to willfully walk out here and do this? Yes. Hold him. Get Romans 8 and 29. Absolutely. Okay. Because so, there's something in the Bible called predestination. Okay. I, and I believe that, you know, because I look at Pharaoh mm-hmm. and, I, and, I, and I see that he had so much pride in that. There were several times that, you know, my wife and I were talking about this. Uh-huh. Um, guys, this is my wife, Aaron. All right. Hey, Aaron. Cool. Um, but what I want to say is, mm-hmm. you know, there were several times where it said Pharaoh's heart was hardened. Harden. And it said that several times. Mm-hmm. And then, get a little deeper and then there after a couple instances it said the lord pardoned pharaoh's heart absolutely now we can make a hundred different arguments whether the lord hardened his heart because pharaoh had already had so much pride in there that, we, uh-huh. that there was no, that he was just going to keep going that direction i don't want to go there right I'm regardless saying, he hardened his heart regardless yeah his heart his uh-huh. heart hardened. okay same same scripture chapter nine where who should who are we to judge what God feels, what God wants. Right, he has mercy on whom He has mercy, right? And He has, and it was it, and He curses who He curses, or He passes judgment? He has, uh, um, he, get this. Will you read that for me, buddy? Yeah, get this. Yeah, okay, real quick, though, real quick. Um, get Romans 8 and 29, real quick. This is Romans chapter 8, verse 29. For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son. So those, are, those people are predestinated. So, yeah. When you go into the Bible, that's that's pretty much what I wanted, right? Isn't, isn't there a scripture like at the beginning of Romans nine that talks about Pharaoh, kind of an example? Of it gives, it goes into it. It goes into it. We're gonna go into it, but real okay. quick, right? You mentioned because you you quoted scripture, of Peter, which says he his will is that all people should come to repentance, right? Yeah. Is God omnipotent? Oh yeah. He's all powerful. Oh, so yeah. if he wants something to happen, it's gonna happen. No. How? Because <laughs> he's omnipotent. He's all. You know what omnipotent mean? Means? Oh, I, I know what it what means. What does it mean? means all powerful all powerful but, so if you're all powerful power he is power power comes from him but so how can so how how is he all powerful if, if he wants something to happen and it doesn't happen do you know what it doesn't mean what does it mean he's not all micromanaging that is what uh, I, that's what that's what i mean i'm, I'm saying he is all powerful and Get that's number 23 and 18 that's one of the things that I think it's that's one of the things that i see as one of god's greatest strengths there is that he's all powerful there he's, are not, things. he's not all micromanaging. No. Okay, so how does he ensure that birds eat? What? How does he ensure that birds eat? He provides for them. Is that micromanaging? How many birds there are in the world? Wouldn't yeah. that be micromanaging? Well, does he shove does it in throat? Does he know? Does he know every hair that's on your head? Yeah, he does. That's not micromanaging. Does he have to tell my hairs to? But 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 it, 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 if, if he if he knows that. Right, then that's micromanaging. Well, the definition of micromanaging that, that's is micro at the micro. Something is going to be a certain way, and then going and making it different, or going and doing it yourself. He doesn't have. I believe his hands are on me. I believe his hands are here. Like I, I don't know, you know exactly where you got to What does the word theater mean? The what? Theater. What does that mean? I don't know. It means play God. 
That's what it means, right? So if I was to write a script, right, put on a play, right, I dictated everything that happened in that play, right? I wrote it. Okay. I play God, yeah. right? So be, that's because that's what God does. Okay. See what I'm saying? So there's not no, you can't <laughs> go around. I mean, again, I let's, let's, I let's go back to Romans 9. Why are we, I don't even understand why we left that. Let's, let's go here. Let's listen to the Bible. Read. This is Romans 9, chapter, uh, oh yeah, Romans 9, verse 4, 14. What shall we say then? Is there, uh, is there unrighteousness with the Most High? God forbid. For he saith unto Moses, I will have mercy. Go back to whoever resists his will. That's what I mean. Verse 19. A rhetorical question, read. Thou will say then unto me, why doth ye, why doth ye, it's like it. Thou wilt say then unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? We're talking question. Who hath resisted his will? Who? Oh. Can you show me somebody? What does that mean? Everything God wants to happen, happens. Go ahead. No? no. Okay, so why did it ask rhetorically who hath resisted his will? Well, begs the question, did he ask rhetorically or was he sending, it a, sending a letter to ask who's resisted God's will? I can see. Well, hold, 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 let's keep reading. Read. Okay. Nay, but no, no one. <laughs> no one. Okay. Go ahead. Nay, but O oh man, who art thou that appliest against God? Uh -huh. Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? God forms everyone to do what he wants them to do. It's not for man to be mad at God about how he formed it, right? Have not the potter. Power over the clay? Wait, what? Have not the potter power over the clay? God has power over everything, every creation in particular. He has power. Right, read. Of the same lip to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? See that? So he makes some people to honor and some people to dishonor. Right? A man can't go, I was made under dishonor, but I want to be made under honor. Right. I was made under honor, but I want to be made under dishonor. Right. No individual has the power to do that, read. What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted, for, fitted to destruction? So no, they're not just choosing to do something. He's enduring because he wants to show his power. He wants to let Pharaoh be as evil as he wants to for a time to where he gets to a, a, a zenith of pride to destroy him. Pharaoh's not choosing to do this. He's been you. He's a pawn in the game. Read. And that he might might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory. See that? So that's what it's about. It's not about people can choose to do things. God is in control of everything. Let me ask you this. Go ahead. He's all powerful. Of course. We've established it. Uh -huh. Is he all knowing? Yep. Is he all good? Uh huh. Well, no, he's not all good. He's balanced. He does good and creates evil. You didn't know that? Wow. You think Satan? You do. Do you, do you think? Do you think Satan is in opposition to God? I think he is. Now give me Job sure. one. Go. Give me Job and and uh, who got Isaiah? Go ahead. Okay. Give me Isaiah forty-five and Read on. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, 45, verse seven. Uh -huh. I form the light and create darkness. Uh -huh. I make peace. And create evil. Create what? Create evil. Who does this? I the Lord. I hope. I the Lord. God creates evil. So he's not all good. He's good and bad. What was that scripture reference? Isaiah 45 and 7. 45 7? Uh -huh. Yes, sir. He, he creates good and evil. Read. I the Lord do all these things. There's everything. There's, there's, there's nothing that he don't do. Period. Right? Give me Joel 4 and 7. Give me Job 4 and 7. Yeah, first. I mean, we're going to go Job 1. Go ahead. Get 4 and 7 first. Job 4 and 7. Remember, I pray thee, whoever perished being innocent. You hear that in the Bible? It say what? Whoever perished being innocent. Right, so God kills people because they deserve to die. Go ahead. Or where were the righteous cut off? Whoever perished being innocent. Meaning everybody he kills deserve to die. Right? Go ahead. Uh -huh. This is the book of Job, chapter 1, verse 6. Uh -huh. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before Yahweh. Right, so uh, read verbatim, right? Who are the sons of God in this context? Job 1. No, 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 not, not in Job here. Job 1 is talking about angels presenting themselves before God. Read. Before the Lord. Uh -huh. And Satan came also among them. Who came? Satan came also among them. So here's Satan, right, Read. Verse 7. And the Lord said unto Satan, 
Which cometh thou? Where you come from, Satan? Read. They're talking. They're having to talk. He's saying, where you came from? Go ahead. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down it. So I've been all over the earth, right? Read. And the Lord said unto Satan, has thou considered my servant Job? You've seen Job, right? Go ahead. That there is none like him uh -huh. on the earth, a perfect and upright man, uh -huh. one that fear of God and eschew of evil. Uh -huh. Verse 9. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, do if Job fear God for naught? Has not thou made an hedge about him? Uh -huh, so, look, Lord, the only reason he fears you is because you've taken such good care of him, right? Read. And about his house, uh -huh. and about all that he had on every side, uh -huh, read on. thou has blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. Uh -huh. Verse 11. But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. Uh -huh. Verse 12. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. God just gave Satan permission to go do negative things to somebody. You see that? So what does that show you? Satan is not in opposition to God. Satan just asked for permission to do something. God gave it to him. And you go down there and you, you well, let, let, let's put Job to the test. So there is no, he, God do all this. Right? Give me that in 1 Kings, matter of fact. Oh, wait, 1 ask, Kings 2 and 22. Go ahead. Can, can we stay on the topic of Job for one second? Yeah, yeah. I, I just... This may seem minor to you guys, but mm -hmm. I think if I wanted the Bible to say something, mm -hmm. if I wanted to pick something out and say if I wanted to question the character of God or mm -hmm. say is this how it is, I might do something as crazy as look at the first one of the first verses you just said. Mm -hmm. Satan, where have you come from? Or mm -hmm. where have you been? Mm -hmm. And then I could say, is God really all knowing? Because mm -hmm. if God dare ask Satan, his creation, where have you come from? then I could probably pose the question, does God even know what he's talking about? That's not what I'm going to say. That's not what I'm going to say. No. That's not where I'm at. No, that, but that, God that's, knows all that, things. That's a, that's a problematic argument. And, and there's only an argument employed by somebody who doesn't know the Bible and doesn't know God. No, I'm not. Somebody not, who has misconceptions about God. What I'm saying God. is that I'm not employing that argument okay. at all. I, trust me, I believe God is all known. Mm -hmm. I, I believe he knows all things. And what I wanted to say is I could make that word translated into English by saying pretty much whatever argument I wanted to, I could pick a few scriptures and I can go with it. Why haven't you been able to substantiate your argument with scripture as of yet? Because I didn't prepare to see you guys today. <laughs> and here's the thing. People always tell us that, but they, and they, they can never prove their argument, so that's the interesting part. But I didn't come to you with an argument. You know what I did come here what to? You come with? I came because I don't know what you guys are about, mm -hmm. and I came because I wanted to hear, and I wanted to talk. And can I just thank you guys for letting me be here? And I, I know that you guys are here. You want to say something? Thank you for letting me say something to you. It's not not everybody lets someone else talk to them back and forth, and I'm I, I, I'm honored to do that. So That's thank fair. you. Uh, uh, thank you for having the word here. I believe in it. I believe in it wholeheartedly. I got lots of studying to do. You're right. I do. Yes, you certainly do. But but Hit the books. But something I wanted to say. Mm -hmm. All the Old Testament prophets, all of the Old Testament kings, they done, they've all screwed up. Every single one of them. Every single one of us created for good or for evil, whatever we want to argue, we screwed up. We've gone against what I would call the will of God. I also want to say is that Jesus did die for the Jews. He did. He died for the Jews. Paul would say for the Jew first and to the Greek because he was not just talking Greek. There were other people that heard the message. There were, other, there were other people around there, actual Romans, that weren't Jews. Can you prove it? I can't because I wasn't there, but just let me look so at you're it. you're making an assertion. I, we read you. to you in the book of Romans when he said the Romans were Abraham's children after the flesh. We, wrote, we read that to you. But what I have to say here is that... What I have to say here is that Jesus is a good God. Jesus is God. Now we're going there. Jesus is the Son of God. He was made in the image of God. We were made in the image of God, but we're not we're not equivalent to Jesus. Jesus being one man, after Caiaphas said, What is one man that he should die for the sins of every nation? And one man well, not every not, nation, then they would would man would not be enough. But one perfect man would. Okay. One man that actually did the full will of the Father. Okay. Made for good works. Yeah, but I still need to know how he died for anybody outside of Israel. 
I'm with you all the way, but he did it for Israel. Give me Luke one. Let's just go to Luke one. What about the what about the what about the Roman centurion that repented? The Roman centurion that repented? Yeah. Which one? Out, Which one? It's an axe. It's in the gospel. Where is it? At? Yeah, there was an axe. Axe nine, I think. Something like that. Cornelius? Cornelius? No, not just Cornelius, because he oh. was a God-fearing Greek. I'm talking about the the one who had the prison guard, maybe. You talking about the one in John? I mean, the one in the gospel where with John, that was John. Was that one with Christ. No, it was an axe. Because Paul, Paul, and maybe Barnabas were okay. in prison. You guys can help me out. With Quick that. question. Um. Would you say America is like Rome? In what way? Let's just say in the way the societal structure is. The societal structure, right? We Rome had a large army, right? We had a large army, yeah. Right, so, so the army of Rome, was it made up of one homogenous group of people? I don't know. I would seriously doubt it. Cause no, because they went around conquering people and then bringing them into the army. So there were all kind of people in the Roman army, right? Just like America. You have all kinds of you have white people, you have black people, you have Hispanic, you have people from all over the world that are in the American army. Then you have armies that kind of like sidekicks the American army, like the Canadian army, the Australian army, etc. right? It's various allies that have, you know, weaker military structure, right? So just because a Roman centurion repented, how do we know that that person's not an Israelite? I don't, but I don't. Don't, know, I don't know that he isn't. No, but, but here's the thing. If the Bible points towards us exclusive salvation, then we can only come to the conclusion that the person is an Israelite. If he doesn't save Urbanum, he's not. It's because he's a Roman centurion. You mean tell me an Israelite couldn't go and sign up for the Roman army? I don't know. They did it, like Cornelius. Where did, where's Cornelius from? A city in Israel. And everybody goes there and acts like Cornelius is this. No, but but he's from Israel. He's not from anywhere, and his family lived there. So what does that let you know? <laughs> he's an Israelite. God-fearing Greek could be Hellenistic Jew. It could be, could be a Hellenistic could Jew. Be. That's a good point. Precept. Yeah. Let's just go to Luke real quick. Don't worry about Trent. Give me Luke. Luke 1, let's start at 68. Luke 1 is 67. Luke 1 is 67. And his father, Zacharias. The father of John the Baptist, Zacharias, right? What, what happened? Was filled with the Holy Ghost. Filled with the Holy Spirit, right? And what did he say? And prophesied, saying. A prophecy, filled with the Holy Spirit, right? Go ahead. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. Exclusivity, right? Go ahead. And hath raised up in horn of salvation for us. Everyone. Us. Uh -huh. In the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, uh -huh. that we should be saved from our enemies. So Israel have enemies, and God's promise is that he was going to save Israel from their enemies, and he was going to use Christ to do it, right? So how is Israel going to be saved from their enemies, but their enemies are going to be saved with them? Because they're being saved from themselves. No, 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 no. Israel got to be. He didn't say he's going to save Israel's enemies from himself. He said he's going to save Israel from their enemies. So to, to rationally come to the conclusion that the enemies are going to get a salvation too, it's, it's totally against the Bible. Yeah, and, and you and I, you and I could go with this. I think that that is a. It, it can be. A, I mean, a very accurate physical mm -hmm. argument. I, and yes, I think I think I would read that and take it into a more spiritual argument that see, but, the see enemy that, of God it, is, is sin. It, it, it's convenient to employ a spiritual argument. That's something called replacement theology. That totally contradicts the theme of the whole Bible. Right? Was it a spiritual argument in Egypt? Well, no, I wouldn't say No. That. Was it a spiritual argument in the Babylonian captivity? I understand what you're saying. See what I'm saying? Go ahead. This is addition to Esther chapter 10 verse 9. Uh -huh. And my nation is this Israel, uh -huh. which cried to God and were saved. Uh -huh. For the Lord hath saved his people uh -huh. And the Lord hath delivered us from all those evils, and God hath wrought signs and great wonders which have not been done among the Gentiles. Therefore hath he made two lots, one for the people of God and another for all the Gentiles. So the lot for us is salvation, right? What's up, y'all got a question? Y'all got a question? You speak for where you got? you Algerian? Moroccan, Algerian? Where y'all from? Huh? I was going to say Paquito, Paquito. French, Petit, Petit. Where? You, where, where are you from in France? In France. Where in France? In France. Paris? Paris. 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 Okay, my uncle from La Chapelle. Oh. La Chapelle, see? Okay. What are you guys? You guys Algerian? No? Not Algerian? You guys just French? Romania. Romania. Oh, 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 the gypsies. They're the gypsies. Okay, they're just, yeah. gypsies. Okay, they're gypsies. Romania. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> all right, they're the gypsies. All right, all right. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, you finished that? Like let's, let's pick it up right now. I'm give it right back to you. 
Yeah. It's the juice. It's the juice. Yeah. Go ahead. It says, um, therefore hath he made two lots, one for the people of God and another for all the Gentiles. And these two lots came at the hour and time and day of judgment before God among all nations. So in judgment day, the Israelites are going to get a judgment and everyone else is going to get a judgment. Right? Three. So God remembered his people and justified his inheritance. That's simple. So if you're not an Israelite, you get that right. When Christ can be saying you're going to separate the sheep from the goats. See what I'm saying? So it's a separation that's going to happen. What's going to happen to the goats? Not salvation. Go ahead. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 31. Uh -huh. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, uh -huh. and all the holy angels with him, uh -huh. then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Uh -huh. Verse 32. And before him shall be gathered all nations, uh -huh. and he shall separate them one from another. As Every nation. He's going to separate. Christ is coming with separatism. Read. One from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. So the nation. All right, so go ahead. You got a point? I have a question. Go ahead. What are you and what am I? I'm an Israelite. You're an Edomite. That's right. Right. So, so what, is, what does that mean? What does that mean? Yeah, like, are, are, we, are we talking as... Let me get my whole question out before, before you answer. Are we talking as equals right now, or are we talking as you're a child of God and I'm an instrument of destruction? The latter. I'm an instrument of destruction. Yes. Because okay. look at what your people have done. Went all around the earth destroying it, right? Thanks. So you clearly instrument of destruction. All I can say, guys, is we're obviously not on the same boat. We obviously don't. We obviously don't hear the same scripture, God. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I want to say something, and it's my last thing I'm going to have to leave. It's, my, my pregnant wife can't stand up for hours. Um, take it or leave it. I love you. Hey guys, hey guys. Well, the bottom line is you can't argue with his own experience with God. I need to say that. Hey guys, that's that's okay. Give it to me. If you give it to me. You got what you got. Oh, this is hey, I got. Hey, you got a scripture. Give it to me. Before you do, before you get to the scripture. I don't know exactly what you're doing, and I don't know if you think that I'm false, but what I can tell you is that. There are a lot more fun things that I can do tonight. And I have a bunch of people tell me this. But, that's a, that, but listen, but that is okay. If you guys hate me, if you're honest about it, if there's something to record, you know that I can't record you. Know that there's not a single thing you can say to me that's going to get me to keep from loving you. Because that's who Jesus you love me. is. I don't believe you love me. It's okay. You don't have to believe it. Uh, I can't believe it. I can believe the sky's blue. I can believe it's raining or not. That's, that's true. okay. That's true. Go ahead. Read it. I'm going to love you. This, I'm gonna love you. this is the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 10. Uh, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. That's what has to happen. Right. People, there's people in the captivity. Jesus Christ. Just read letters. Jesus Christ said, you got to go through this. Your people got to feel this. Right? You got a pregnant wife. You know what happened to pregnant black and Hispanic women? You know that? Great. They right. just ripped out a stomach. Right. Right. Go ahead. He that killeth with the sword uh -huh. must be killed with the sword. Y'all yeah. killed. Y'all enslaved. Jesus Christ said the people who did that, they have to experience that. Right. Guys. They have to. I'm sorry. It's the Bible. I can't. That's I, right. I can't. Agree or stand here on this because well, so it's okay, but Jesus because my God and your God are different, right? Yeah, because I follow God of the Bible. That's right. My God is the God not limited Abraham. by something to God of color and race. Oh, it, I didn't say nothing about color and race. It's about nationality. That's, That's right. right. We're, I mean, uh, have you read look, the Bible? You, you just got done telling us about Israel. Israel. It was all about Israel. Pretty Israel. 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 That's that, that, oh, oh, pretty much every single culture has slavery. It's okay. Did every single culture have chattel slavery? Did every single culture hang people? Did every single culture cut babies out of wombs? Did every single culture sick dogs on little children? I know Herod, did the every, king of the Jews, did, sent a whole did every, did generation Herod, of men Herod, Herod, Herod was an Edomite. Right. right. Herod Jews. was not a Jew. That's Herod right. was an Edomite. All right? So, so no, he didn't. And you're an Edomite. Right. So, that's of course, right. that's what your people do. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, it's like I said, right. give it to me. Go ahead, read it. Go ahead, you guys. We'll get it to you. This is Psalms <laughs> chapter 137, verse 7. <laughs> Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom. Uh -huh. 
in the day of Jerusalem. So God don't remember the children of Edom. Go ahead. Who said, raise it, uh, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. Who chanted for our destruction. Read on. O daughter of Babylon, uh -huh. who are to be destroyed. Being the daughter of Babylon now is not ancient Babylon. The daughter of Babylon. That's what America is. That's the allegorical reference to America. The daughter of Babylon. The so, place that is spiritually called Egypt. So don't, don't give me the whole... But it didn't, or but it wasn't, or but this isn't how it is. What do you mean? What if you were white? What do you mean? I'm not. I'm, I'm, no, I've, I've got to ask. What if you were white? The truth is the truth. No, it doesn't matter not, how you yeah. feel about what it. What if you were half right, white? What if you were half white? Oh, daughter of Babylon. It's about, first of all, do you know how a biblical nationality is determined? How? Patrilineage. Is that right? So it's about your patrilineage. Okay, so the one drop so, rule back in the 19, early 1900s, if you were like one 252nd black, whatever the heck it was, yeah, well, then you're yeah. not an Edomite, right? Well, well, no, no, no. The Bible does not work on a one drop rule. The Bible <laughs> works on patrilineage. That's on interesting. Sea, right? Okay. So read. So, oh, daughter of Babylon, uh, who are to be destroyed, read. happy is he. Happy. Now listen, who's going to be happy, Greece? Happy shall he be uh -huh. that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. So according to the word of God, we're going to be happy when we can reward your people like you guys did us. That's, right. That's when you're going to see happiness. When we can do to you what you did to us. Greece? Happy shall he be uh -huh. that taketh and dasheth thy little uh -huh. ones against the stone. Right. Y'all mercifully murdered our children. This is the word of God saying we're going to be happy when we take y'all babies and dash them against the stone. Right. 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 That's the word of God. So if you don't bear witness to that, that's fine. We clearly serve a different God. Right. Right? I serve the one of this Bible. The good, the bad, and the ugly about this Bible, I take and I serve and I worship the individual who cre who's the creator. Of it. Right. Why? Because he's all powerful. He's all knowing. He's a God of war. He's all of these various things. And I'm afraid of him. Right. That's you know right. He said... He said that y'all children got to die. Y'all got to go into slavery. You guys have to experience all that. Because we sure had to experience all that for half a millennia. Right. You know how long half a millennia is? That's a long time. All right? You getting ready to fill it, Bo. Don't worry about it. You're going to be working in that sun, skin, going to be peeling, all that. Right? Come. That's what's getting ready to happen to you. Because God said it. Finish that. That was it on that. Luke, this, said, hold on. That this is the book of Lamentations, chapter 4, verse 21. Uh -huh. Rejoice and be glad, uh -huh. O daughter of Edom. You, tell you, you should be happy now. Live it up, Reed. That dwellest in the land of Uz, uh -huh. the cup also shall pass through until thee. The cup is coming to you. What is the cup? The cup of the Lord's judgment. It's going to come to you. Read. Thou shalt be drunken uh -huh. and shalt make thyself naked. That's how much you're going to drink of the Lord's judgment. It's like you're going to be a drunk. That's how much of God's judgment he's going to. He's going to pour out more judgment to you than he's ever poured to anyone. So look at all the things God has done in the earth to judge people. Know that you're going to get it even worse than that. Right? You finish that? Verse 22. The punishment of thine iniquity uh -huh. is accomplished, uh -huh. O daughter of Zion. Coming, we're coming to the end of our iniquity being punished, right? So then who's going to come for us? Christ, the Savior, read. He will no more carry thee away uh -huh. into captivity. Right? We. This is our last captivity right here in America. And as you being the culprit of the last captivity, you're going to have to get it, read. He will visit thine iniquity, uh -huh. O daughter of Edom. Now it's time for y'all sins to be judged. It's time for all of this to be judged. It's time for the indoctrination, the social engineering, all the various things that you've done to us to be judged, right? Making us a, 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 a worship of white youth, making us celebrate Christmas, making us a go to Easter, right? All those various things, all of that societal indoctrination that you've given to us that is pure idolatry, you're going to be visited for all of that, not even just for this, for that as well, for the spiritual crimes, for the ideological and philosophical crimes that you commit. Read. He will discover thy sin. That's right, all your sins, because y'all people haven't been dealt with for your sins. You haven't seen it. You guys have gone throughout the world for 500 years doing what you please. Raping, robbing, murdering, pillaging, killing, all of that, right? So it's going to come to a point where now God is going to do what y'all for. Why? Because he doesn't love you. So because he doesn't love you, he lets you fill up a long rap sheet. Then he hits you with a rico. It says his people. Matter of fact, give me that. What is that in Hebrews? He deal with you as sons. He deal with you because he deal with us as sons, right? He deals with you as a bastard. What does that mean? You're not his son. So what he's doing to y'all is he's letting you guys, just like every other heathen nation, he lets you guys do all the wickedness you want, and then at the very end, he slams you. Versus us, every time we do something, he gets it. Right? It's the second Maccabees, chapter 6, verse 13. Uh -huh. What is a token of his great goodness when wicked doers are not suffered any long time? That's right. It's a token of what? 
of his great goodness. It's a token of God's great goodness when you're not suffered for a long time, read. But for with punished. Uh -huh. For not as with other nations mm -hmm. whom the Lord patiently forbeareth. See that? That's what he patiently forbeareth, y'all, read. To punish uh -huh. till they become to the fullness of their sins. That's right. Y'all getting ready to come to the fullness of your sins. And when you do that, then he's going to punish you. Right, read. Con, it says, so deal with he with us, uh -huh. lest that being come to the height of sin, uh -huh. afterwards he should take vengeance of us. That's right. So he don't deal with us that way. That's why America, if you think about all the crimes that America has substantiated itself upon, and nothing has happened, what's happened to America? What bad thing has happened to America? One of the million Americans that It's never happened. So if you mean to tell me America that got away with doing the most crimes out of any place you can ever research in history, right? And nothing's happened to it, that means God is going to grand finale it. This, right. this, is this is wisdom of Psalm 12 and 22. Uh -huh. Therefore, whereas thou dost chasten us, thou scourgest our enemies a thousand times more. So everything he's done, this is happened to us, right? Y'all will get a thousand times worse than you. Go ahead. A thousand times more uh -huh. to the intent that when we judge, we should carefully think of thy goodness. And when we ourselves are judged, we should be for, uh, for the goodness of God towards us, right? Precept of okay. war, though. Go ahead. Hold on. This is Isaiah Hold chapter 13. Go ahead. Go ahead. What's yeah, don't, don't worry about that, man. You can read it whenever I'm gone. But I, I want to say your entire faith is predicated on hate. You don't even know. No, no my, 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 my entire faith is predicated upon love of a people I do know. And right. part of my faith is hate toward people I also know. That's right. Right? That's, right? Toward people I also certainly know. And if I'm predicated upon hate, it's because the Bible is. Because right, all we right. sat here and do to you today is read the Bible. Right. Something you didn't. Go ahead. Yeah, you guys. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 16. Go ahead. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces. Well, so we're just basing on hate, but God is talking about people's children now. That's what he's talking about, really. Their children shall also be dashed to pieces uh -huh. before their eyes. Uh -huh. Their houses shall be spoiled uh -huh. and their wives ravished. Yeah, I mean, is that, am I predicating things upon hate or is that coming out of the Bible? Did I make this up or is it in the book? But it's, it's not context. It's, 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 well, what's the context? Can you give me the context? You can't utilize the context argument and then not correct the context from it. That's all anyone ever does. It's out of context, but you never tell me what context so it is. Hate, man. All right, God hates you. Remember that. That's right. right. God hates you. They can, they can keep running with it. That's out of All people ever tell us is it's out of context. Tell me what the context is. Right. Show me how I'm taking it out of context. If you don't do it, you have a, it's an empty statement to make. And it's a statement that you make that's a defense mechanism because you don't know the Bible. You haven't studied the Bible. You've been taught lies your whole life. And it, as opposed to analyzing what the Bible says, you just run to the lies. No, we just, how many precepts? Do, I mean, how plain it got to be through the Spirit? How plain it got to be? It's simple and plain, man. All right. God is going to visit your white people for what you've done to blacks, Hispanics, and Native people. Right. That's, right. right. That's right. simple. If you believe in God, if he's a just God, if he's a loving God, you have to believe he's going to do something to you. You have to believe it. You can't sit here and analyze all the hell that you've done, all the murder that you've done, and truthfully think God is just going to let it slide. He's going to do something to you. Right. No, he's not going to put you in some place underground and make you burn forever. He's going to take you and put you at the whip of a black or Hispanic man. That's, that's right. That's what right. he's going to do. Right? He's going to put your baby to the stone and a black or Hispanic man going to be holding him by the ankles, man. Right. Give me that. If, the, if they, uh, 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 if the, if they, uh, if they children be multiplied, it's for the extortion of, yeah, for the swarm. That's what I need, man. Because that's the only God got him gave his wife a baby, right? Okay. Why did he give him a baby? Yeah. For the sword, man. Okay. That's just to be another devil dead, man. Right. Right? So go ahead. This is the book of Job, chapter 27, verse 14. Uh -huh. If his children be multiplied, uh -huh. it is for the sword. Right? So, hey, you white people, y'all having babies? You, you, you get a good old baby having a baby shower, gender reveal party? God said it's for the sword. That's, that's right. right. That's the reason why y'all having white babies right now. To die. That's right. right. If his children be multiplied, uh -huh. it is for the sword. There you go. It's plain and simple, man. For they deaf, they'll say it. Then listen, your whole faith is predicated upon me. You no, know, my whole faith is this. This right. happened to us. Justice has to be served. My faith is predicated upon a just and righteous and holy God. All this happened. <laughs> Can you mean tell me just nothing's going to happen? Yeah. Nothing? Are you kidding me? What kind of, what type of monstrous God do you serve? Where you think this has happened and nothing's going to happen, but there's a place called hell where people are going to burn forever. Dante's Inferno. 
you believe in a God way worse than y'all think of God we believe in. That God is a horrible, I don't know who that God is. He's a monster though, whoever that God is. Yeah, Howard though, right? He's a just God. He gonna recompense this man. All right, tenfold, man, go ahead. Listen on that. This is on that. Oh, hold on, it's a little bit. Uh -huh. And his offspring shall not be satisfied uh -huh. with bread. That's right, you ain't gonna, you mean you gonna starve. Your offspring, though, they gonna be born, they gonna be in, pro we gonna build nice cave projects for the white man to starve in. Right. Just, gonna, just let them starve in it, right? right? I can't wait. Man, You're gonna be, I'm gonna have a roach, all kind of flying roaches up in their project, <laughs> right? Right. You know, I'm gonna import them, man. Why? Because they need to feel that, man. Right. So, you know them, they gonna love the roach, really. They gonna love we, you, 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 you wake up, you like, damn, man, it's a roach in here. Esau gonna love the roach, that's gonna be his best friend. Right, the rats, the roaches, the priests that read that. This for his kid too. Uh -huh. This is Isaiah chapter 13, verse 18. Hey, y'all hey, even trying to get on that baby, man. Go ahead. <laughs> Their bows also, shall dash the young men to pieces, uh -huh. and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. That's right, they ain't gonna have no pity, man. Right, when the missiles come, they ain't gonna have, they not gonna care, man. The Most High gonna rain down that judgment on this place, right, on the newborn baby, on the old people, and everything. You so-called blacks and Hispanics, that's why you need to separate and repent and come back to the faith and the law, because if, if, if you don't, you gonna go out with this devil. That's right. right. You don't wanna fall with this devil, free. Their eye shall not spare children. Uh -huh, their eye shall, they're not going to care, man. The newborn baby crying, man. Most high going to take that baby out, man. That's All right, read that. Psalm 109 and 9. Uh -huh. Let his children be fatherless uh -huh. and his wife a widow. See that? Let his children be fatherless. Why put them in him? Uh, uh, Esau, who's wrongly called Jacob, he's going to get killed. And that woman's going to be a widow, and that baby ain't going to have a dad. Yeah. Right? But they're going to have to trust in it because we're going to put them right in work. I'm going to have some good work for that little boy or girl, whoever that is, and that girl. Right, go ahead. It says, let his children be continually vagabond. That's right, be what? Vagabond. What's a vagabond? A damn homeless person, man. Right? That's the that's the future of the white race. Continual vagabond. Read right on. And bang. And what? And bang. We'll be begging panhandling, man. And we're gonna be upside your damn head. Right. On a consistent basis. That's right. Right. So read that. Let them seek their bread also out of their desolate places. Uh -huh. Out of what? Their desolate places. Out of their You're gonna be born in them damn caves trying to find a bite to eat, man. Right. All right? Eating cockroaches talking about they rich in protein or something like that, man. Huh. That's the future of the so-called white race. And That's it's a right. well-deserved future. Huh. It's a well-deserved future because all you guys done is evil and hell in the earth, man. Huh. All right, so nothing but evil and hell is guaranteed to come to you. Huh. Right. Right. Thus saith the Lord thy God, right? Our God, right? Yeah, how? Read. God, it says, uh -huh. Let there be none to extend mercy. Let there be what? None to extend mercy. There's going to be nobody extend mercy. We ain't going to have mercy on the whole. Yeah, right. Oh, decrepit devils like that? Right. We're right. going to be on the ass, too. Come on, brother. Come on, brother. We're going to be, we're going to be on that devil ass, too. You better get, listen. He, listen, he better do his damn job. I don't care how old he is. Your grandpa had to work into his damn 60s. Right. That's right. So, so I'm going to be nice to this devil? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Hell no. He get, listen, he going to get it bad, man. Right. The little kids, them little skinny, little uh, 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 golden retriever women they got, they going to get it bad, man. Damn. We gonna have that whip, we gonna have that cat of nine tail, man. That whip with the squeak, and that's America, that's it. That's right, right, right. His, his children are gonna be him. That's right. They gonna, have, they gonna do it like a damn career. Out here, begging, being homeless, right? Not having no damn food. That's the future of the white man. That's right. And again, it's a well-deserved future. Cause you wouldn't have, if y'all wouldn't have left Europe, and came over here and did none of this, y'all wouldn't have nothing any damn way. That's right. right. All that you have come from conquest ain't nothing in Europe, man. Tell me what it was the great imports from Europe, man. All right, Automo automotive, where they get all the materials to make the automobiles that they make? Do they get it in Europe? No, they got to get it out of Africa, they got to get it out of Asia, they got to get it out of, of the Americas, right? So they really have nothing, right, over there in Europe, right? So if it, was, if it wasn't for conquest, colonialism, slavery, they, the white man would have absolutely, they would be broke in them damn caves still. And cold ass England freezing some damn way. Huh. All right? Drinking some damn tea. Right. All right? That's all the hell they would be. And that's where they deserve to be. But no, what do they do? They come over here to America. They rape, rob, murder, and steal. They go to Africa. They rape, rob, murder, and steal. They go to Asia. They rape, rob, murder, and steal. They go to Australia. They rape, rob, murder, and steal. Right? You know what type of resources they got over in Australia? They got a gold mine that turns gold instantly. It just be it cranking gold out, right? They over there just taking all the gold. Let me get the gold, let me get the gold, let me get the gold. See that, you think the indigenous uh, uh, Aboriginal Australians, you think they making all the money off that gold in their land? No, they didn't even have no interest in gold. If you study their, their culture, they live primitively, they live simply, they weren't even worried about no damn gold, right? 
they just, you know, doing their thing, right? White man come and steal all that gold from them. That's rightfully there, right? Make they self rich. If it wasn't for that theft, they wouldn't be damn rich. All right, so how do you white people get rich? Off of uh, stealing, right. off of killing, right. all right? Off of extortion, off of exploitation. Right. Right or wrong? I'm telling the truth. I'm right. telling the truth. Right. 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 He, <laughs> he gets to wear his suit, he gets to shop at Nemo's because of theft, because of murder, because of exploitation. That's the only way he gets to do that. Outside of that, there wouldn't be no damn Neiman yeah, Marcus. That's right. Wouldn't be a Saks Fifth, wouldn't be a Gucci and Louis, etc. Wouldn't be a Lamborghini if they, they wouldn't go and get all the metals for that Lambo out of Africa. It'd be impossible. You, you got the cell phone, the cell phone, you got all of it, all the parts of it is coming out of Africa right now. All of it, right? But are the, is the, the Nigerian owned the cell phone company? Where's the great Nigerian cell phone company? Right? It don't exist, right? They got a scam. They got a scam. They got a scam. But the white man, he owned the cell phone, right? All right, Sprint, Verizon, damn T-Mobile, all the wolves and the devil that the Bible speaks about, all right? That's who owns it, man. And how do they do it off of theft, right? That's how they get in, theft. You got a devil, right? So who got three cents? Go ahead, keep going. It says, let there be none to extend mercy unto him. We're we going to be totally merciless to them, man. Why? They was merciless to us. Give me Lazarus. Lazarus and the rich man, please. Go ahead. Neither let there be any to favor. Go ahead, y'all good. Go ahead, go ahead. Neither let there be any to favor his Go ahead, Elon. Right. All right. Elon, go ahead. Neither let there be any to favor his father's children. They're going into subjection too, man. Right. That's right. right. They're going into slavery. All right. But it's all right. They ain't going to get it better as a white man, but they going to get it. All right. They're going to be asking the black woman for some hair. Mm -hmm. Can I get some hair, please? I need you to eat. Any woman going to come to assist and talk about she needs some tracks. All right? That's coming soon. Believe you me. All right? Go ahead. They're going to want some tracks in that day. Go ahead. It says, let the iniquity of his father be remembered with the Lord. All right? So let God always remember what white people have done. If these white people try to say, that wasn't me, bro. My ancestors. They say, let read that part again. It says, let the iniquity of his father uh -huh. be remembered with Yahweh. Most I going to remember what their foreparents did. Come. There is no escaping it, man. All right? There's no escaping it, devil. Go ahead. Come. It says, and let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. Don't even forget what his mom did. Horrible mom did. Right. All right? His mother's a whore. All right? She laughed. She got niggas killed on that plantation. Don't forget what that bitch did either. Right. That's what the book says. Right? You got Lazarus coming? Go ahead. It's the book of Luke, chapter um, 16, <coughs> verse 20. Read. There was a certain beggar named Lazarus. Uh, who, is, who is the beggar named Lazarus? What does Lazarus mean in the Hebrew? It means uh, God is my help, right? So this is symbolizing Israel. We a beggar, right, Read. Which was laid at his gate. Uh, was laid at whose gate? At the rich man's gate. We just, we here amongst the white man. That's what it means. We, we cohabitate in the same area as the devil, right, Read. Which was laid at his gate, uh -huh. full of swords. Read on. Verse 21. Full of swords, man. We're in need. And desiring to be fed uh -huh. with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. What's the crumb? $189 a month. That's a crumb, right? EBT, WIC, uh, Medicaid, all these, that's the crumbs we're getting fed, right? Read on. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his swords. That's right. That's, again, that's going into the, uh, 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 the various, the small little bit of aid that they do to right? The little bare minimum that they give them, right? Read on. And it came to pass that the beggar died uh -huh. and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Uh -huh. In Abraham's bosom, go ahead. The rich man also died. The rich man died also, right? This is talking about the end of time, judgment day, right? Read. And was buried. Uh -huh. And in hell, he lift up his eyes. In the grave, right? Hell means the grave. So when he's in the grave, he lift up his eyes, read. Being in torment. Uh, being in what? Torment. In torment, right? In torment. This is important to understand. Because people break this down, it's talking about a place called hell, right? But he's in torment. But watch this, read. Say again. And see if Abraham are far off. So he see where he's at, he can see Abraham. If hell is this deep down underground place, how is it he can look up and see Abraham in that place? That don't even make sense, right? So where is he seeing Abraham? This is because they're in the same place, right? They're in the same kingdom. He sees Abraham, who's also what? His father, because he saw come out of Abraham too, right? Read. Abraham will fall off, uh -huh. and Lazarus in his bosom. Read on. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, uh -huh. have mercy on me. He said, have mercy. I need mercy, right? The rich man, the white man is being tormented, and he wants mercy. Have mercy on me. Read. 
and send Lazarus uh -huh. that he may dip. He said, send who? Lazarus. Wait a minute. Send Lazarus so so he could do what? That he may dip the tip of his finger in water so and cool my tongue. But let me ask you. I thought the devil is over hell, right? He's Satan is over there tormenting you. So why is he saying Abraham tell Lazarus to dip his finger in some water and come and cool my tongue? What what Lazarus got to do with hell if he's in Abraham's book, right? He's talking about the kingdom. He's in torments. Lazarus, which is Israel, is, is jacking his ass up. And Esau is going, Abraham, tell Lazarus, ease up. Have some mercy on me. Just give me a little break, right? Just dip, dip, dip me in water and put it on my tongue. Give me a little break, right? It's like the white man begging and saying, I'm going, yeah, we the Edomites. Put y'all in Israel. We brothers, man, right? We bro, come on, take it easy on us, right? But did they take it easy on us? I thought we was brothers, right? Go ahead. Cool my tongue, uh -huh. for I am tormented in this flame. I'm tormented in this flame. What's this flame? Did, did not the Bible call Egypt the fiery furnace of affliction? Egypt, right? What were we going to Egypt? Was right. it hell? Yeah, it was hell because of how hard they was enslaving. So that, that tormented fire that he's in is not the fiery pits of hell, but it's rather us afflicting him and putting him in captivity. Right, read. But Abraham said, uh -huh. Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received this. Uh -huh. Got good thing. You've already got your good. See this here? This is his good. He's got it. Remember this? Remember downtown Dallas? <laughs> Forget about any additional mercy, man. You got it already. Right? Go ahead. And likewise, Lazarus, evil one. And what do we get? We got evil things. Things on this time. Right? So when that time comes, when we are in our rightful position, they're not going to get no mercy. We're not taking the tip of our finger, dipping it in the water, and putting it on their tongue, right? Meaning yeah. extend them any mercy. Going into the other precepts that were read, right? Read. But now he is comforted. Uh -huh. Now he is what? Comforted. How are we going to be comforted? In the kingdom. When we're comforted, read. And thou art tormented. And thou art what? Tormented. Right, so when we are comforted, they get tormented. Period, right? There is no us coexisting, a great utopia where everybody loves each other. No, it's either we're getting tormented or they're getting tormented. One or the other. We can't cohabitate. None of that. Right, Reed? Verse 26. Uh -huh. And besides all this, between us and you, there's a great gulf. What is pitch. that great gulf? That's like a, the same way now there's a great okay. gulf. Pitch. Dealing with the societal uh, gap, right? They're way up here. We're way down here. Besides, y'all are at the bottom, man. Nothing I can do, Reed. So that they which would pass from hence to uh -huh. you cannot. Neither can they pass to us. That's right. That will come from henceforth. That's right. So, 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 so the way the classes are going to be set up the same way they are now. You can't, and you can't make yourself on the level of a white man in this country. You can't do it. It's impossible. Same way then. You never in our kingdom. You'll never make yourself on the level of an Israelite. Nothing you can do. Right. Read. Then he said, "I pray thee, therefore, uh -huh. Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house, mm -hmm. my brother." <laughs> That he makes this Yeah, five brethren, right? One guy, one plus five is what? Six. How many uh, uh, tribes of Esau was it? Right? Esau had five sons, then you had Amalek, right? Amalek was the tribe as well, right? So you had the six. So when he says, I have five brethren, he's dealing with the sons of Esau. Let me know who he's talking about. And even moreover, further, King Herod, who reigned at that time, of Christ, right? He had five brothers. He was an Esau, right? So it's showing you it's dealing with Esau, right? Read. For I have five brothers. I have five brothers, read. That he may testify uh -huh. to them. Read on. Lest they also come into this place of torment. Right, read on. Abraham said unto him, uh -huh. they have Moses uh -huh. and the prophets. Right, how, did, how do the Edomites have Moses and the prophets? Because they pronounce judgment on Edom. Moses and the prophets all pronounce judgment against Edom. For your violence against our brother Jacob, X, Y, and Z is gonna happen. All they had to do was listen to the prophets and not do violence on it. But what does it show? Cutting that white boy again? Ain't no free will. Right? All these people get warned. Even like Nineveh, right? Jonah goes to Nineveh. Nineveh, repent. Stop doing that. Nineveh repents. Then what happens? They sin again and God just gave them the same destruction he was going to give them anyway. You see what I'm saying? You can't go against the will of the Most High. The Most High set you up to fail. You're going to fail. It's right. just that simple. So what he's saying is, listen, you're, you're the other Edomites, they've already been warned. Even us, right? We out here right now, right? These white people are walking by the same way our people are. They're hearing the message the same way our people are. They can easily stop at any time doing us the way they're doing us if they wanted to, but they don't, right? So guess what? Ain't gonna be no mercy. There's no excuse, right? Read on. 
let them hear them. Uh, and he hear said, the, hear the prophets, right? Listen to the prophets. Yeah, yeah. But they never said, give heed to the prophets. Read on. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. Listen, you see that? This is how miraculous it's going to be. If, so, if, if somebody rises from the dead and goes and tells these people that we can't read, and he said unto them, said unto him, uh -huh. if they hear not Moses and the prophets, uh -huh. neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Yeah, if this Bible isn't good enough for you, nothing is good. That's what it's telling you, right? If somebody say, man, I need a sign. I need God to show me Jesus to come down. I need somebody to rise from the dead. No, it's either you read the Bible, you don't accept that, nothing's going to be good enough for you, right? So if you devils can't get what the prophets are saying, there's no way you're ever going to get it, and you're not going to get mercy. What God is basically saying in this parable through Yahweh Shai is that guess what? There's nothing they're going to be able to do. They're going to get these torments, and we're going to get comfortable. That's simple.